If I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another one. When Lewis wrote The Chronicles of Narnia, he asked himself the question, what would it look like if Christ walked a world like this? In Surprised by Joy, Lewis said, I think that all things in their way reflect heavenly truth, the imagination not least. And God works through nature, through our own bodies, and through books. After all, that is what joy is ultimately pointing to. God. C.S. Lewis was born in Belfast, Ireland on November 29, 1898. Despite being well known as a theologian, Lewis spent much of his youth as an atheist before renewing his belief in God in 1929 and converting to Christianity soon after. He's a visionary. I think he really set the tone for, first of all, like women in literature. Like He wrote two really strong female characters, which I think is great. Today, he is best known for the books he wrote, perhaps the most popular being Mere Christianity, The Screwtape Letters, and The Chronicles of Narnia. I think the books have sold over 70 million copies. I think the films, I mean, the films have obviously done very, very, very well. C.S. Lewis himself was a professor at Oxford, you know, very, very brilliant guy. C.S. Lewis is always present on set, you know, you kind of feel him because you're, you're stepping into his imagination, like that's what these movies are, they are his imagination come to life. When Lucy first steps into Narnia, it's just like the most magical thing in the universe for me. My favorite like fun fact about that is that they blindfolded her before they brought her in. And so her like excitement and wonder of it is completely real, which I just think is so cool. It makes me so emotional, even though it's happy. It's just the potential. Like she doesn't know that this beautiful snowy world is gonna be her home and her family's home and she's gonna be a queen of this world. This world is full of hope and light and faith and courage and knights and chivalry and valor and honor and just the character's complete desire to do what is right at all costs and the idea that there are things worth dying for. I love Lucy's hopeful belief and Peter's obedient leadership and Edmund's repentance and even the way that Susan's fall is left open. It's a magical world, but it's real for me. I feel like Narnia is my home. My parents still say I live in Narnia. <laughs> um, I refuse to come back down to the real world. I watched the movies and read the books when I was really young and the love for Narnia never really stopped. It's just change my life. I think it's about that escapism. At the time, I wasn't really happy. Narnia was the place I went to. I mean, we get to live in this beautiful, magical world with a lion who cares about us and loves us. Narnia has had the very effect which Lewis attributes to joy. Narnia has brought people to Christ. I, I was a Christian before I discovered Narnia, but it just completely deepened my faith. It was like God used C.S. Lewis to bring God and religion, accepting it into my heart, really. It gave me this new view of heaven. It showed me that heaven was a place that is all of our homes in the end. Our most joyful feeling here doesn't even compare to our most joyful feeling in heaven. I love what he has to say about heaven. and It makes me want to go to heaven so much. The Chronicles of Narnia is itself hope, 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 courage, faith, faith, faith. belief, life, comfort, comforting, bliss. I'm just gonna say love, love, dream, home, home, wonder, everything, everything. I think magic, magical, magical, passion, ineffable, inspiration, adventure. How would Lewis feel if he could see the way his own writings and worlds have sparked joy in us? 
That's an impact so profound, it nearly breaks me. I think what's so important about him to me is it's still like you're pulling up next to a fire and listening to your grandpa read to you and tell you a story while he's smoking a pipe. My understanding of C.S. Lewis is, has been through Douglas Gresham, who's C.S. Lewis's stepson. He's one of the producers of the Narnia series. Obviously, C.S. Lewis had a big part in Douglas's life, and you can see that in the film, how important C.S. Lewis was to Douglas, you know, uh, especially after his, his mother died, you know, extremely sad, and C.S. Lewis became a father to him, you know. This is, this is the guy who brought me up after everybody else died. This is the guy who cared so much for me. Everything he wrote that uh, expands and explains to us the nature of Christ, I think we should all read. And I think people should know that. I think people should know what a wonderful man he was outside of the literary bit, outside of all of that. Uh, he just was a very, very fine man, a very, a man who I miss dreadfully, I have to confess. I suppose the thing that I really love about Narnia is that there are so many different ways to read it and what it is when you come to it and what you find in those books will vary so much depending on who you are when you read it. I think sometimes there's a perception of Narnia as quite a simple story, but the more kind of time you spend with it and the more you learn about it, the more depth there is to it. It's kind of like with, with great, um wise people, they managed to say complex things in a simple way, right? So he wrote children's stories, but uh, there's always a double meaning to them. I swear every single time I watch it, I find another meaning, another reason for why characters do what they do. The more you look, the more you find. And there's some that C.S. Lewis probably didn't even mean to put in, but he just did because the Bible and God is always right there with you. When Lewis talks about why he did it and why he wrote the series, he has this quote about finding it difficult to feel as one should about the Christian story. And he kind of lays out this idea that, you know, I had this thought that if you could reframe it in a world like Narnia, would it be easier to feel passion about it and emotion about it? You know, that's why I think they've connected with people because they do have another level. They have a deeper level. I think a lot about if I didn't read Narnia, would I be the same person that I am? I didn't really know it was a Christian story when I first discovered it. And when I knew about it, that just made it that much more special. So when Aslan speaks, obviously he, he's speaking from a, a beautiful place and I'm uh, speaking from a very profound place. He is a really interesting way to frame Jesus, the figure of Jesus, and make him kind of come alive because of the choice to make him a lion. He brought it into kind of a really child-friendly, digestible form, like when kids can kind of understand the more complex situations that it does, you know, compare to with the Bible. Aslan! <laughs> Lewis's connection with Aslan, a fatherly figure who helps these children along their way, helped me uh, understand the story I was being taught in church and feel a connection towards a higher power. I really appreciate Narnia because it uh, brought me closer to God. When I read Narnia, I kind of just understood the part that Jesus plays. I just needed another aspect that portrayed faith differently and that's what Narnia is for me. Especially like in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, when they're like, oh, is he a scary lion? Is he tame, right? Is he safe? And the beavers are like, safe? No, but he is good. He's the king, I tell you. Do you see him now? I think that one has always kind of stuck with me when Aslan just like ferociously roars, just like silencing all doubts. Like this is the one true king and he's now before your very eyes and there's no turning back because this is as legit as it gets. He used to kind of scare me in the books, but it's been recently that I've started to see how he's not tame, but he is good. 
Like there's that line where C.S. Lewis writes that people who haven't been in Narnia think that a thing cannot be good and terrible at the same time. That duality of like a ferocious lion and a cuddly kitten. I think that that really does personify the God of the Bible. He really is this terrifying, mesmerizing force of strength, but also sort of this cuddly kitten that can roll around in the leaves with Lucy with no sense of time or agenda. A lot of my younger life was spent hoping I could be like Lucy, um, you know, this brave girl who believes so clearly and so honestly in Christ and his presence. He's just very fatherly, and the way that he acts definitely shows how God acts towards us. Like, it makes me feel exactly how I feel about God. I love all like the little themes. Obviously like the big one is Aslan's like resurrection. When the stone table cracks in two, it's kind of like the temple. Aslan kind of like stepping forth through that arch with the sun behind him. He is like splitting sin upon itself. And that's kind of when it clicked for me and that and I understood because he comes back just like Jesus and he, he had sacrificed himself for Edmund's sins, just like Jesus had sacrificed himself for the sins of man. How he died for Edmund is like Jesus dying for our sins and that just like really helped me realize how much God loves us by seeing it on screen in a way that I can like really like see and watch and understand. Courage, dear heart. I needed that quote and it found me. Courage, Courage dear heart. heart. Courage is, I guess, the word that always comes to mind when I think Narnia. I think that everywhere I've got, I've got a little uh, necklace and a keychain. I have a necklace with it written down like this one. And I always wear that uh, when I go to exams in school. <laughs> in fact, this necklace I'm wearing. When Aslan says, Courage, dear heart, he appears as an albatross and says these words to Lucy. So this little bird I'm wearing now, it's, it's supposed to say the same thing. There's always that really lovely message of courage and sacrifice and kind of bravery in his books. The idea of nobility and the idea that it's laying down your life for other people. I love where Jill talks about how she would rather die fighting for Narnia than die at home doing nothing. I think the legacy is beauty and faith and in believing something. So even if it's not religion, you can still have faith and you can still have courage to do the right thing. I think it's really gorgeous that you know, these books were written and set in like World War II era, and yet they've, you know, they've come a long way. You can read the books at any age, you know, specifically C.S. Lewis wrote that in the beginning of the line that's in the wardrobe that you might be too old for uh, fairy tales now, but when you're older, you'll be young enough to pick them back up again. Someday you'll be old enough to start reading fairy tales again is, I think, so many people's favorite. That kind of <laughs> was just exactly what happened. I found myself old enough to read fairy tales again. I love that quote. I see it everywhere and I like, a little part of me just gets so happy every time I, I read that. It fits Susan very well because she obviously stops believing and she thinks it's all a game. But one day I truly know that she believes in Narnia again. C.S. Lewis was a famous theologian, sure. But there is a connection, however sentimental or bizarre or unwarranted, that lets me see him more as a friend than as a public figure. I call him Clive when I get frustrated, even though I know very well that he despised that name. <laughs> There's a reason he was Jack to his friends. In, in a way, Jack is one of her friends, because Jack would, would write this material that he's written so carefully and so beautifully that it is there for everyone to read. And I think that's in a sense that, that, that is Jack being our friend. Lewis wrote often of friendship. Friendships are about something, he says some shared interest or dream or vision. And in this current stage of my life, most of my friendships are about Narnia. Narnia has truly blessed me with some of the best friends. I think the first friend I ever made in this fandom was Abby. <laughs> I've got people um, across the world that I call my best friends and I talk to you every day. We have a group chat and there's five of us in it and we have literally just filmed a Narnia Zoom production. 
I love them so much. Everyone is so kind and so gentle. I met Trisha and I met Molly and I met Abby. I've had friends who have saved my life at times and I actually did meet her in person. Next moment, the book was in our hands. Our heads were bent close together. We were pointing, quoting, talking, soon almost shouting, discovering in a torrent of questions that we liked not only the same thing, but the same parts of it and in the same way. Sometimes you worry that no one else is this passionate about it as you. And you don't realize how many people actually are until you know you enter the world that is Narnia <laughs> and you realize so many other people love it as much as you do. We all have this connection through Narnia and it's having the comfort of Aslan being an image of God for us. God brought us together and he used the author of a children's series to do it. Lewis had a profound impact on this world. As a Christian who brought and continues to bring others to Christ, as an author who helped to redefine a genre, as a theologian, as a stepfather, as a man in his personal life, his impact can be seen in so many ways, just great and small, personal and public. <sighs> in entire books, and in three-word phrases. If I could say anything to Jack, I'd probably desperately want to say everything. If Jack walked into my office today, I would say, Jack, would you like a cup of tea? Because that's naturally what we've always said to each other. Let's get coffee or tea. He would want to get tea. I would want to thank him for writing this beautiful series, and I would want to tell him that it completely changed my life for the better. He's one of the most influential people, for sure, in my life. Thank you for helping to form so many people. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you will never be enough. Thank you for creating this absolute phenomenal world that I can just go into where I can let my imagination run wild and where I can be free and loved on that home that we call Narnia. But it was very difficult to know what to say to a man whom I have missed and longed for for so long, I'd probably jump up and leap, leap at him and, and grab him and hold on to him to, to make sure he was real. I'd, I'd burst into floods of tears and cry all over his shoulder, I think. It's something too great to be described or expressed through words. But I hope if I could say just one thing, he would take it as the highest compliment I can offer when I tell him. You break my heart. <laughs> <laughs>